Hey guys, I hope you guys are doing fantastic. I am also doing great. I really hope that all of you are safe and sound. Uh, well, last couple of months, I've been making some videos about uh, certifications, banking certifications and some uh, roles in retail bank like mortgage, etc. A lot of questions, a lot of questions have been asked in those videos and some of those questions are pretty common. So I thought, uh, let me just pick up three, three of those questions and answer in this video for a broader benefit of everyone. So these three questions which we are going to answer in this video are number one, uh, there are two basic courses, IFC and CSE, uh, to get your foot into banking sector in Canada. What is the difference between these two courses? Number one. Second question is, uh, should you do these courses from your home country before you come to Canada? Will it benefit by any chance uh, to actually get a job in Canada beforehand? Uh, the third question is, uh, there IFC course, which is a mutual fund course, is actually offered by CSI. Uh, and IFSC so which one is the best or the better one and uh, should you choose the CSI one or you should choose the I uh, the IFSC one so these are the questions which I'm going to answer in this video so guys first of all I think it's my moral duty to tell you about myself because a lot of people have also been asking about about myself and I've been giving a lot of uh, information about banking and courses on banking uh, so let me just tell you that I don't have a banking job yet. Uh, however, all these information that I'm basically telling you is because I am trying to find a job for myself. That's number one. And number two, I have also recently finished my IFC course and I did it for free. How I did it for free, you can check out it from this video. So basically I'm doing some extensive research for my own self and um, my background, I also have almost four years of banking experience from India. So that is why I was kind of, you know, interested in this sector and trying to find something in this sector. Without wasting any time, guys, uh, if in case you are new to my channel, do check out the other videos also and consider subscribing in case you like the videos. And in case you are coming back to my channel, thank you so much and welcome back. Now let's start the video. So guys, let's try and answer the first question, which is what is the difference between IFC and CSE? Well, for the people who are new to my channel and who have not watched the videos earlier, well, IFC and CSE are two different certificate exams. They are basically the basic exams which will help you get a job in Canada in retail banking. Well, there is obviously no guarantee of getting a job. However, let me just try to explain what are these. So in Canada, you can actually not sell any financial instrument like a mutual fund, stock, bond, etc. till the time you have a license to sell it. And to get a license, you actually, the first step of getting a license, you actually have to clear a certification exam. And that certification exam is IFC and CSC in case you want to actually sell mutual funds and some other debt, debt and security instruments. So that is the background to it. Now I made some videos about it, about different roles in banks, which is which was this. And I tried to cover extensively what kind of courses that you require. So if you see a lot of roles in banking, one or two courses which are very common, which you can also say that the courses which help you put your foot in the door when you're trying to get into banking sector, retail banking sector in Canada, are these two courses which I'm going to talk about. Well, there is a lot of talk which is going on that which course is better, which you should do and which you should not. What is the difference between the, between these two courses? So let's try and answer these questions today. So guys, before getting into the differences, let's actually get into the common things between these two courses. The first common thing is that both the courses are being offered by CSI. CSI is Canadian Securities Institute and rest assured, this institute is pretty much recognized by almost all the banks and you can check that by actually going and checking the JDs of advisory roles of almost all the banks uh, in Canada. So CSI is common thing. Both the courses are offered by CSI, which is Canadian Securities Institute. Number two is the curriculum. There is some common curriculum or some common theme of knowledge that you actually get from these two courses. That is how to deal with the customer. What is the regulatory bodies? What is the compliance of the bank? 
what is the goal of the bank how to talk to the customer and gauge the goal of the customer what kind of profile the customer has especially the risk profile and depending on that what is the kind of investment advice that you can probably give having said all that the major difference or the first major difference between these two courses is the products that you can sell so if i have investment funds in canada i can only sell mutual funds so if somebody comes in the branch or in the bank asking for some other product other than mutual funds or some other designated products which are not high risk products you can actually not sell or advise that person unless he is looking for a mutual fund so this is the first major difference that ifc covers mutual funds as a product and not other complex but for the knowledge of the other complex products such as equities liquid alternatives managed and structured products derivatives etc you will have to do canadian security course which is also known as cse so once you clear the exam you actually don't get the license directly nor you can as an individual apply for these license you have to actually find an organization if you want to sell a mutual fund or you want to sell a securities you have to find an organization such as a mutual fund dealership or probably an investment dealership or a bank who will actually apply for a license on behalf of you so guys before moving ahead and talking about the nuances of the courses let's actually try and summarize the first two points so that we are absolutely clear so ifc as a course deals with mutual funds they teach you about the mutual funds and hence you get a license only to sell a mutual fund license which you get from mfta which is mutual fund as a dealers association however the umbrella of products when you are dealing with a uh, csc or canadian securities course is much wider where you can sell uh, different products such as securities derivatives uh, managed products etc which we just talked about and you get to sell Uh, all these products and get to have the license of these these products now let's just actually kind of see before moving ahead that if you have these two courses what kinds of uh, licenses you can actually get or what kind of products you can actually sell so in case you have done csc as a course then not only you will be able to have a license to sell mutual funds but you will also have an opportunity to have a license for exempt market or be a investment representative or uh, manage portfolio or become a portfolio manager mind you for all these jobs you need to have a license so the next major difference is the course fee course fee majorly depends upon if you are taking their only interactive and their online material or you are also uh, basically applying for or you are ordering for a hard copy of the book personally speaking since i took ifc i also ordered and spent about 100 dollars extra to have a book of ifc which was also available in the soft copy when you have that portal most important thing to note over here is uh, that once you clear the exam the portal actually lapses within 7 days and in case you have not downloaded all the material it completely lapses in my case i did not notice that and uh, i don't have any soft copy anymore so in case of ifc uh, the fee for uh, their online material which uh, which is a soft copy basically is 470 dollars plus taxes in case you want a textbook also a printed textbook then you have to pay 50 dollars more in case of uh, CSC it is $1180 plus taxes if you only want the online material and uh, another $100 if you want uh, the hard copy as well do remember that uh, for CSC there are two textbooks and for one uh, and for IFC there is only one so now let's just talk about the exam and the exam format in case of IFC you have one exam you get 100 questions 3 hours of time 60% to clear the exam and the content or the maths le- the level of the maths in that exam is probably you know 10 standard kind of a maths so if you have decent um, high school maths i think you will be able to uh, clear the exam without thinking much you also get to use calculator however when i took the exam i actually did not use the calculator at all in case of csc however the, there are two exams 
The format of the exam is pretty much the same. You get multiple choice questions. You have 60% to clear the exam. Each exam has to be cleared separately and there are two different exams for that. So guys, now let's talk about the final difference. Well, the final difference is the, futurist, the futuristic approach. Why I say this is because if you see different JDs of different bank roles, uh, you will actually realize that CAC is a course uh, which is kind of de facto requirement for almost all the bank roles. Whether you talk about the trust roles, uh, estate roles, uh, lending roles or you know the, the advisory roles etc almost all the roles which are at a level which is above teller and universal banker actually want you to do uh, either ifc or a csc but most of the bank want, prefer csc so in case you are clear about your career in terms of banking that you actually want to make a career in banking and you want to uh, you know start off your banking career and probably give yourself an edge uh, before you even get selected then csc is an option for you however if you just want to test the waters you're not really clear whether uh, you want to uh, you know make a long term career in banking you want to just go check yourself and then finally you know decide once you have worked in that particular bank then since ifc is a bit cheaper option ifc is something you should, which you should go for Personally speaking, I did IFC. However, I did it because I was getting a funding from somewhere, from somewhere and given a choice, if I get, uh, get to do it today, I think I will pick CSE instead of IFC. Since I was getting the funding and I was also talked about it in this video, in case uh, you are new to Canada or you are coming to Canada, you can actually check this video and see how uh, you can get the funding for, uh, for some particular courses. Now let's talk about the kind of designation of the courses that you can do after doing these two particular courses. That is very, very important. Designations and courses that you can do after IFC are pretty limited as compared to uh, the courses or the kind of career options that you can choose. So guys, I basically tried to uh, encapsulate as much as I could in terms of the differences between these two courses. But of course, you know, this is my research, which I did for my own self. And of course, I'm just a human and I can, you know, kind of forget something. Uh, in case you know more about it, uh, you should definitely tell me and you should mention in the comment section so that other people can also, you know, kind of uh, get to know from, uh, from your experience, etc. Okay, so now let's try and answer your second question, which was, can you actually do, do these courses before actually landing in Canada? Well, the answer to that question is very simple. It is yes, because uh, all you have to do is you have to register yourself. Uh, obviously, they ask you for a Canadian address. Uh, and since a lot of people are actually having a COPR who have had their landing and gone back and have not been able to come back to Canada, hence they must have had some address so that you can give that address. However, having said all that, I will not suggest that you should take this exam before you come to Canada. There are two reasons for that. One, you will obviously not have a permanent address. Number two, uh, even if you actually take this exam before coming here, after that, there is a validity of three years within which you need to take a license. And if you don't take the license, you have to take this exam again. And with the Corona situation and stuff like that, I don't think that you should eat up in that period. And of course, there is a gas station period of one year when you have to take this exam after registering. So I don't think that if there is any, you know, IT glitch or some glitch which happens and you, you know, kind of don't get all this uh, material before you come here, then you might, you know, uh, kind of just uh, flunk in the exam or not able to take the exam and stuff like that. Let me just talk about the kind of exam and the remote protocoling. Well, after the Corona situation, this exam can happen at home. I have taken it at home sitting here in Canada. It is a remote protocol and hence it can be taken from anywhere. However, because of the reasons that I told you earlier, you should not take this exam before you come to Canada. And as it is when you come to Canada, like I told you, it is not very tough exam and you will be able to clear it within uh, one or two months max and it takes some time to settle now, another question that people ask is can you get a job immediately after taking this this exam 
Well, the answer to that question is I will give you my personal experience. I have started getting interview calls. However, because of the corona situation, I am actually not applying, uh, you know, really, really aggressively till as of now. However, you start getting interview calls. At least that has happened in my case. Okay, another question that a lot of people have actually asked me is, can you actually get a job on the basis of this certification sitting in India? So firstly, you also need to understand one thing. Uh, without a without a permanent residency or a work permit it is actually very very difficult to get a job sitting from india that is number one uh, the reason for that is uh, the organization has to justify to the government of canada that why you are hiring somebody from outside the country uh, when you have talent within the country hence the moment you actually tell them that you are not in the country or you do not have a permanent residency or a work permit uh, they usually don't consider your application. So when I was in India and trying to apply over here, that I was never getting any response. Now, now that I am here and uh, I have a permanent residency, on the basis of that and the, on the basis of this course, I um, I am actually getting calls for interview. I am not very aggressively applying right now because of the Corona situation. Um, that is the reason I don't have a job right now. Otherwise, I think uh, by now I should have had some kind of job uh, in a bank uh, by now. But however, I am definitely getting interview calls on the basis of uh, these certifications. Okay, so now let's answer the final question. Uh, the final question was whether you want to do a mutual fund course from CSI, which is IFC, which we discussed in this uh, video earlier or you want to do it from IFSC, which is an organization which is similar to CSI. Well, the answer to that question is that if the objective is to is to get a mutual fund license, then either of the two courses are good enough. Um, however, IFSC is a bit cheaper. So you can you can actually, you know, take your call. However, it is not very cheap. It is barely around, I think, $20 or cheap. Uh, having said that, why I wanted you to see the first part of the video before we answer this question is because you can actually see that CSC is a bit expensive. However, if you're looking banking as a career, then CSC anyways covers what uh, what is there in uh, IFC as a course. So I think CSC out of all the three courses is, is the better option. Well, that is my view. You can obviously take your call. So I hope this video actually brought some value to you. I have also made some other videos on banking. You can actually check those out from my uh, channel page. And in case you like this video, do share it with people who might need it and do subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching.